Hey everybody, this will be a little tutorial on how we clean the Ling. I'll probably do a video kind of involved the catch, clean, and cook portion of it. But for right now, we're just going to start out by cleaning this guy. We're going to get him skinned, get him gutted, and we'll take the meat off of him and show you how to do it. It's the easiest way. Come right up here. Score all the way around the skin, right around his neck, all the way around under his stomach. Stomach is kind of hard because you don't want to poke through. You pop through, it makes it really challenging. all the way back around make sure this part's cut he's a little bit froze still take some forceps grab a hold of the skin where you made that cut and start pulling it down a little bit Work your way all the way around, just tugging that down. You get here to the stomach, you start to get to where the meat looks like it's sticking. You can take those forceps and run right up underneath. And break that all away. Or you can take your finger, stick your finger up underneath there and do the same thing. get it toward basically broke all the way around and take your forceps get them as tight as you can and just pull pulls that whole entire section of skin off just like that that's garbage all right next now that we got the skin off to gut them come right up behind this fin you'll feel where the ribs are go in right along that all the way down past the vent cut that whole section right there come up here cut that all the way across it's a really good chunk of meat if you don't do this you'll end up losing that piece of meat and to get the guts out just reach up grab a hold of the stomach Cut it off up inside of there. And that whole piece peels right out. Now, Usually start, I'll take this chunk of meat off just so it's done and out of the way. Right up underneath that rib cage. It's a good chunk of meat. Then, these fins, most of the time you can grab them with your thumbnail. Get underneath of it. Just unzip that fin. This one's being stubborn. Fan will come all the way off. Get these two little pieces of it missed. Flip them over, do the exact same thing on this side. Grab a hold of it. Just unzip it just like that all the way up. Makes it a lot easier when it comes time to fillet them. So now to fillet them, I usually start on the underside, down here by the tail. Cut in. 
Now I'm underneath the spine right there. Just work my way all the way down that spine. Take that meat right off. Once you get it loose enough, then you can just kind of push it down. All the way down there to the tail, you basically get everything to right there off. Do the exact same thing all the way up. Once you get it there, come right along that spine again. Start cutting it off. Anybody that's ever done a deer or an antelope or elk, taking the back straps out basically the exact same way. These fish have a spine structure kind of like that. You got a T, T section, I guess is probably what be the easiest way to refer to it. Get right up there behind the back of the head. I usually just cut right down through all the way. Then you push it out and just start cutting it right off. As long as you do it right, you pretty much get a completely boneless piece of meat. There's ribs that come all the way down to about right here. You go out to about right there, right to the end of that rib cage. Cut it right off. Every once in a while, you'll get some ribs right here in this. You just take your knife, go right up alongside of them, cuts that section out. That's where your ribs will be. completely boneless filet right there okay so got the other side off it's pretty much all that's left as long as you do it right get almost all the meat off of them really there might be a little bit up in here but it's not there's not much left now, once they get all the meat off just fill a bowl with some cold water let them soak in cold water for a little bit if we're going to eat them right away, I'll soak them in salt water and do a couple changes of salt water, about 10-15 minutes each change. It pulls all the blood and the muddy flavor out of the meat. You don't have to do it. I've done it before without doing it that way. It seems to me that it makes it a little bit better. But if you've never eaten them and you catch them, these are some of the best tasting fish. It's all really good white meat. You get quite nice size fillets off of them even the small ones you know most of these that we caught this trip kind of see about the size of kitchen sink so they're not huge but you still get really good chunks of meat off of them this is enough to feed more than one person really but then we'll take them and we cut them up cut them just into small chunks about bite-sized chunks batter them or throw them in a flour and uh, corn start or uh, cornmeal and then we'll quickly fry them fry them just long enough to where it starts to float and they're awesome it's like fish and chips so just a little quick view this is only one one fish that's how much meat you get off of them like i said they're all about that same size so get that much meat off of each of them it's enough to feed a couple people quite well all right 
put some of it in the freezer. We're going to cook up a little bit of it. Just take some table salt. Sprinkle some table salt in there. Mix it up and let that sit for a little bit. You already see some of the blood and stuff coming out of it right there. Alright, so to slice these up into bite-sized pieces, start out in chunks. Cut it into pieces about like that. All right, once it gets all sliced up, I just kind of try to fill through each piece. Make sure I don't feel any bone chunks or anything. If I feel any bones, most of the time you just grab it with your fingernail, pull the bone right out. <clears throat> All right. I usually just take a little bit of flour. Do whatever seasonings you like. I always do lemon pepper. A little bit of garlic salt. Seasoning salt. New pepper, you can do any kind of seasoning that you like. Get them all nice and mixed in. And I'll just take the chunks, put it in there. Just try to pack the flour on where it's nice and evenly coated and down in the pan.
and start to float. About done. Put you back down for just a minute. Done and floating like that. Scoop them out. All nice and golden brown. And that's what we got. I'm just going to keep putting more in there. You use breadcrumbs, you use cornmeal, a couple different ways. But any way we've ever cooked it, it's good. You can boil it. A lot of people take the um, like the crawfish boil seasoning, boil it in that. It's really good. I've heard people use Seven Up and different things. I've never done it that way myself. We've boiled it and fry it. That's the only ways we ever really prepare it, but Let the rest of this cooked up real quick. Mama's gonna try a piece of ling. She's not much of a fish person, but. It's not bad. Putting her on the spot. We found out she likes perch. <laughs> Alright, I'll get this last batch put in. Right all up.
right there, they're pretty much done. Kind of like to let them get just a little bit more crispy. Another 30 seconds. See the bubbles kind of quitting, it's usually about where I'll take them out. At that point, they're basically nice and done. This is what we got. That's about a ling and a half worth right there. Really nice and crispy chunks. Fried up. That flesh is so nice. I love it. My favorite way to cook it right there. Some of the best fish. I mean, a lot of people won't eat them. They're slimy and they're kind of gross when you first catch them, but once they're done, it tastes great. We enjoy eating it and catch them all the time throughout the winter. It's kind of one of our most favorite ice fishing adventures. and So we'll go down and catch quite a few of them throughout the winter. This year we haven't done quite as many as we usually do. Mostly due to the ice took a while to get going really good. Safe enough to get out there and spend the night. But... Got good ice down there now, so might try to sneak in one more trip before the ice goes out. Just going to depend on our weather. It keeps getting warmer and warmer. We've actually had a very mild winter compared to what we normally do. So, But we're going to get some of this plated up. We're going to eat and catch up with you guys later. A lot of times we'll use some cocktail sauce to dip it in. Trenton's going to have a piece. Yep, kid approved. Right there. I want to say thanks to everybody for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy what we do.